Hi, everyone. Um, as Claire mentioned, I am Matt Gara. I am the Director of Student Programming here at Sci City. I get the incredible privilege to oversee how we do entrepreneurship here at Sci City, um, but also lead our summer fellowship program, which all these teams have participated in. So you're gonna see a lot of different ventures throughout all of this, and if you're in the audience as a student, maybe you're a first year, this might be you next year, potentially. Um, before I jump into these, actually, let me just introduce this next team. So this next team, Whiskey Bravo and Ben, gave me maybe the best story of the year, because this year, how we met Ben, we typically meet students you know, through events like this, and we meet them at the expo, we meet them maybe at Startup Yale, or maybe they just like think, like, what is this big glass building? But you probably have seen these little ducks around, around Side City. And you're like, what are these little ducks? And the story is, these actually were a little bit of a joke on my part, because actually these are part of the swag bags three years ago now as the ducks, because if you don't know, we have a shower in the back of Side City, and I thought it would be a little silly joke to have a duck. Well, our Side City team thought it'd be funny to even like make that of a bigger joke, and now, as you can see outside, if you haven't, there's a 10-foot blow-up duck. Well, that big blow-up duck is the reason we got to meet this current team in Ben and Whiskey Bravo, because Ben saw the duck last year and was like, what is this giant duck? And that's proceeded to see Side City, and meet what we were doing, and all of a sudden he was part of our accelerator program and proceedingly into our summer fellowship program. So without further ado, I'll give the mic over to Ben and Whiskey Bravo. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay, sweet. Hi, I'm Benjamin Barkoff. I'm the president and founder of Whiskey Bravo. Uh, I'm also a sophomore here at Yale. At Whiskey Bravo, we're building the leaders of tomorrow by honoring the heroes of today. So we're focused on two challenges. The first is the military challenge. Millions of veterans suffer from conditions like PTS and TBIs. Many feel isolated and alone. Military families face the challenges of deployments and some grieve for lost loved ones. Every day, 20 veterans die by suicide. Something needs to change. Our second problem is the student challenge. US volunteer rates have declined for the last 20 years. Apathy is plaguing young people. And America faces a youth mental health crisis. At Whiskey Bravo, we've developed three core values that guide our approach to solving these challenges. The first is never enough. There's never enough you can do to repay those who sacrifice so much. The second, grandma's rule. Treat everyone like you would your own grandma. Kindness is the foundation to a functioning team. And the third is pull the wagon. We're the ones working to get things done. Not just talk about it, but do it. This brings me to our dual mission. We bridge youth and military to offer a low cost, impactful solution. The military offers students important leadership skills and inspire students because they've dedicated their lives to serving our country. The students offer military personnel interest and gratitude for their service, as well as through Whiskey Bravo programming, the resources and recognition that they deserve. So what is this Whiskey Bravo programming? Well, we have three curriculum tiers that high schools partner with us on. The first is our base curriculum, our simplest list of initiatives that schools can work with us on anywhere in the country. Our most complex is Passion to Project, where students focus on a community struggle and create a new innovative solution. Our base curriculum takes students the entire school year and integrates community service. Students participate in events like pa Project Packout, where students send care packages to troops deployed overseas, Project Book Drop, where they give books to VA patient libraries, and volunteering at Veterans Day and Memorial Day events. Passion to Project is where Whiskey Bravo really shines and is what sets us apart from other youth volunteer groups. Passion to Project allows high school students to turn whatever they're passionate about into something to help others. An example here is Computers for Vets. Augie and Reese are two students from New York City. They saw firsthand the homelessness crisis and wanted to do something about it. Coupling their 
love for computer science and Whiskey Bravo resources and partnerships, they were able to get free computers to formerly homeless veterans and have peer high school students teach computer literacy classes. On the left, we have Gold Star Kid Days. Sarah in Rogers, Arkansas, wanted to do something to support kids whose parents were killed in action. She was able to take two Gold Star families to a, an amusement park, show them a great day, and show that there's other kids who recognize their sacrifice and are grateful for their sacrifice. The kids aren't doing it by themselves. We have an entire student leadership ecosystem that allows them to achieve these goals. Every club is assigned a Whiskey Bravo mentor. That could be a teacher, veteran, nonprofit leader who offers Whiskey Bravo knowledge, attentive guidance, and innovative solutions to possible roadblocks. Each school also offers a faculty advisor, someone who's a liaison between the club and the school. It's not just the people, we have the systems too. So every club has vet instructables that guide them step by step how to achieve a program. They get an operations manual that's comprehensive and explains everything, and we have tons and tons of documentation at their disposal. And it's working. In 2023, we impacted 1,300 students and 1,600 military families. That was a 40% increase from 2022, and we're expecting way more in 2024. We added six new schools, bringing us to an overall impact of 13 schools in six states. And it's not just the numbers. We get the stories, too. Military tell us, give us tremendous thank yous for an hour-long event when they've dedicated their lives to serving our country. We have parents and teachers thanking us for turning students into leaders in the classroom, or parents saying that their son's or daughter's mental health has increased because of Whiskey Bravo involvement. We can't do it without the support and of our partners and donors and people like you. We're always looking for new mentors, new donations, anything to help us. We can't, we're working so hard to try and support military and these students, and we could really use your help. Thank you so much. Look forward to connecting with you all and talking more about Whiskey Bravo. Hello everyone, my name is Michaela Barker and I am the founder and CEO of Matcha Scrubs. Matcha Scrubs is a satin line scrub cap company that creates comfortable and inclusive scrub caps for all healthcare providers. Matcha Scrubs is the first and the only scrub cap company to offer an eyeglasses and an eye shield holder to keep tension off of your ears, as well as other amazing characteristics such as having mask holders, our signature matcha green satin lining, a moisture wicking sweatband, and inclusive styling. Matcha Scrubs has come a long way with the help of Yale and Sci City by being able to create our tech packs, prototypes, and we have just gotten our samples back from our manufacturing partner. And we are so excited to move forward with our Kickstarter and soon take pre-orders. And now I'm so happy to introduce my good friend, Nicole Morrison, the founder of Win Numbered. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Hobbs Morrison. I am a second year at the School of Management and I am the CEO and co-founder of Win Number. One year ago, I was sitting where you all are today in the audience at Demo Day and I'm so thrilled to be up here today talking to you all about Win Number. Win Number is building affordable, accessible analytics for democratic state and local campaigns to help them run more successful races in competitive districts. To start, I wanna talk to you all about the political campaign industry. Each political party has their own consultants, tech, and data. Having spent the last 10 years working in democratic politics, I learned the tech, data, and strategies utilized by democratic campaigns, as well as their limitations. And those limitations were on full display in 2016. For Democrats, the 2016 election wasn't just a challenge at the top of the ticket, it was also a challenge at the state and local level. Looking at state legislative races here, after the 2016 election, Democrats controlled both chambers of the state legislature in only 13 states 
compared to 32 for Republicans. And if we look back at the past few years, we see a pretty slow pace of change. Fundamentally, for Democratic state and local campaigns, they face two challenges. The first is a tech challenge. Most state and local campaigns are using an aging, clunky tech product that provides them with data on the voters in their district. Recent innovations in the political tech and data space have focused on presidential and Senate and congressional campaigns that can raise millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. Meanwhile, the state and local market has been left behind. The second challenge facing these campaigns is a strategic challenge. In competitive districts, the long-standing strategy of just focusing on the likely Democratic base is no longer sufficient in these competitive districts. Yet the current tech that these campaigns have access to makes it really easy to reach out to Democratic voters, but much harder to figure out how to build a bigger coalition in districts that Democrats don't already control. This tech product also lacks an analytic component, which means that campaigns really don't have a sense if their strategies are working until election day, when it's a little bit too late to course correct if your campaign isn't performing as you think it should. In order to see greater success at the state and local level, Democrats need to rethink how these campaigns are run, and that starts with sophisticated analytics to make better and more informed strategic decisions. So as I said at the outset, what we're building at Win Number is affordable, accessible analytics for state and local campaigns. The first product that we plan to launch next year is an analytics dashboard that will give these campaigns granular insights on their voter contact programs. In an instant, these campaigns will be able to visualize data that right now it might take them an hour or more per week to compile. And a lot of these campaigns don't even bother to compile this data because of how time consuming it is and because they lack the talent that understands how to even do this in the first place. Looking back on our progress over the last year, last fall we brought on a technical lead. In the spring we passed the Democratic National Committee's security review, giving us access to the Democratic Party database, which allowed us this summer to make some great progress on our initial MVP development. And looking ahead to our spring 2025 launch, we're focusing on securing the necessary funding, building out our team with a focus on recruiting talent who have experience in the democratic tech and data stack, and identifying campaigns who are planning to launch next year. I'm sure many of you in the audience are passionate about making change. Who we elect at the national level is critical, but who we elect at the local level is just as important. Win Number is building a set of tools to help elect a new generation of change makers at the local level make a difference in their community. So join us in making that difference. Thank you. So, so. So hello everyone, I am Shade Oye. I am Associate Director of Student Programming. I lead the Accelerator Program at Sci City, and I am thrilled and honored to introduce Jacopo and Reese of Replica. So for those of you that do not know, uh, Replica is a marketplace connecting influencers with small to medium-sized businesses. So just a quick background story. I've had the opportunity to work with them both for about a year now. Um, they started their Sci City journey with, as Launchpad applicants, quickly transitioned to the Accelerator program, and then closed out their programming journey with the Summer Fellowship. And throughout, they have shown an unwavering commitment to their venture and have made a ton of progress in a short amount of time. So kudos to you both. Um, and in this next phase, I am really eager to continue watching your progress um, you know, as you move and transition into it. So without further ado, please take it away, Replica. Still dancing with two left feet, yeah. but with a little help, I can move on beat. So, oh, hello everyone. 
my phone. Um, so we're the founders of Replica AI, and we've actually now pivoted. And so we're do now an AI company that does virtual try-on for online fashion brands. So the story, how did it start? Well, essentially, I was on Instagram, and I was just scrolling, and I found uh, an item of clothing that I really wanted to try on. You can actually see that item of clothing here, and you can judge my fashion choices if you'd like. Um, but yeah, so basically, I went to the, the brand's website, and I saw the item of clothing on a model, and the model looked nothing like me. He was taller, he was um, more tanned, and so um, I, I just didn't end up buying the, buying the item because I thought it would look nothing like that on me. So essentially, I thought, why can't I generate an AI digital double of myself and then swap the item of clothing on myself to see what it would look like? And so that's exactly what I did. So on the left, you can see me. And on the right, you can see AI version of me. And essentially, we can now swap any item of clothing from any online store onto anyone. So what we do is we train the machine learning model with photos, 10 photos of anyone. And then we can take any item, as I mentioned, from any website and swap it on. So why would we want to do this? Well. So currently in online shopping, there's a big problem. And the problem is that uh, in-person stores conversion rates are significantly higher than online shopping conversion rates. And the return rates are significantly lower. So we want to bridge that gap and we want to bring that ga gap. We want to close the gap, essentially. Um, and obviously, the, the uh, value proposition for brands is therefore increasing their conversion rate, reducing the rates of returns, and increasing the average order value. For consumers, we can save them time, uh, help them make less unwanted decisions, and help them have a more interactive shop shopping experience. All right, so let's look at the market size. So as you can see, and as we can all expect, the fashion e-commerce market size is huge. If we look at the time, it's over $780 billion. And even if we consider only the sum, it's already $1.35 billion. So a huge opportunity to tackle. How about the business model? So we decide to go for a mix between a SaaS and a success fee. So the SaaS will be the classic yearly subscription, depending on the number of consumers, actually of users and visitors that the, the, the brand's website has. So very simply, the more visitors you have, the more you pay, even though it's capped at a certain point. And that's combined with a success fee. So to incentivize brands to go with us, because they only pay if they receive a value from what we provide. Essentially, if you are a consumer and you are on a website, you try a, an item of clothing with our product and you end up buying, then we take 5% of that. If you don't, we don't take anything. And if you return the item of clothing, we don't take anything. How's the traction so far? So we have 51K ARR on a previous iteration of our product. And on the current solution, we have free build partnerships as well as a list of 30 brands that are willing to try our product. We've already had multiple calls with them. We've showed what we can do. We used our product on their items of clothing, and they are just waiting for the MVP to be ready. What kind of brands are we talking of? Well, it, can, it varies a lot. It can be from, uh, it goes all the way from small brands to Ralph Lauren, Xenia, Zara, and Richmond. Uh, so there is a big variety and based in Europe and the US. In terms of team, well, you've already seen Rhys and myself. Uh, we graduated at SOM and at HSA in Paris. And we worked, uh, we had work experience as product managers and consultants. And our CTO, Justin, graduated from UCL in London and spent the past five years working as a software engineer for a, for a startup. So thank you very much. And before we, um, we finish, we just wanted to show you a real example with, in this case, John, the CEO of Nike. You see on the left an image of him from Google Images. Uh, in the center, a sweatshirt from Nike.com. And on the right is our solution, so an AI version of John trying on his amazing sweatshirt. So thank you very much. And looking forward to speaking to any angel investors who might be interested in learning more. Two left feet, yeah, but with a little help, I can move on beat. Now I can moonwalk in two socks and groove all week, but I can't seem to two step. I lose my feet. Now I can shake it, I can shimmy, I can shuffle like a gritty.
Hi everyone, I'm Casey, co-founder and CEO of CMU. We help online fashion retailers improve conversion by making it easier for shoppers to find local tailors. Our logistics network is currently running in Jersey City, select areas of New York City, and also in New Haven. And of course, this wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for all of the wonderful venture development programs offered by Sci City. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about what we do, feel free to visit our website at shopcimu.com. Um, but enough about me, uh, I'd like to take this moment to introduce the next uh, Summer Fellowship team. One of the founders is also a class of 2024 Yale College graduate, which makes me very, very excited. Um, so without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Taysun. Hello, my name is Chandra Fink. I'm Yale College class of 24 um, and now a current master's student at Johns Hopkins. So raise your hand if you or anyone that you know has ever smoked weed before or done any other sort of illicit drugs. Anyone that you know. That's, that's pretty much everyone. Did you know that fentanyl can be laced even in weed? There have been over, um, the fentanyl overdose crisis is the leading cause of mortality for ages 45 and under in the entire United States. Over 100,000 people have died in the past year due to fentanyl poisoning, and 77% of that come directly from synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Fentanyl is the single deadliest drug threat our nation has ever encountered, um, as put out by a warning order by DEA Administrator Ann Milgram. But unfortunately, these aren't just numbers, their families and lives and communities destroyed and ravaged by deadly drug poisoning. Unfortunately, this crisis has infected my team. My co-founder's son, Jackson Taysun, tragically passed away at the age of 19. He was a teenager attending the University of Kentucky, um, unfortunately was transferring schools and partied and passed away um, before he was able to return home. I similarly lo lost my best friend due to fentanyl poisoning, um, and we're on a mission to solve it and to help reduce overdoses in the United States. And the current method of testing your drugs for fent deadly contaminants like fentanyl include fentanyl testing strips. Now, you might recognize these because they look a lot like something we've all had to go through, which is COVID testing. COVID testing might be convenient whenever you're in the confines of your home uh, or, your dorm or your dorm room, However, imagine taking a COVID test in the middle of a rave. Imagine taking a COVID test if you're on the dance floor or at a concert or a music festival, which are higher risk places where drug use occurs. 23% of young adults find these fentanyl test strips to be not useful or straightforward to use. This is a huge barrier to fentanyl testing in the United States and creates additional um, hurdles that these marginalized communities have to go through in order to stay safe from drugs. From, heart, uh, from contaminants and drugs. One of the reasons why these fentanyl test strips are difficult to use is because you have to go through a multi-stage process. You have to get your drug, you have to crush it, you have to dilute it, you have to stir it, you have to measure it, the list goes on. So that's why we created Taysun. Taysun is so convenient, it fits into your pocket. This device might look like a lighter, but it functions just like a test strip. Taysun makes fentanyl checking easy. All you have to do is put your drug in the top, close the lid, flip a switch, and then wait for your result. The same way that test strips work, two lines will show negative and one line will show positive. So you can take this into the middle of the dance floor and put it in your pocket for safekeeping. Our discrete device helps young people use, safely use recreational drugs by reducing the effort and time to test and improving discretion. Our competitors include traditional fentanyl test strips and also gold standard drug checking methodology such as FTIR and mass spectrometry. These are all highly sensitive. However, not all of them are inexpensive. Fentanyl test strips, as some of you may know, are given out for free at concerts and high-risk social events, and our device is hopefully going to be given out for free as well. It's quick prep, 
and we also reduce the amount of instructions that you have to go through for testing um, almost by four times. Our business model is very simple. We'll start offering our devices online, and then we'll expand to partners, harm reduction clinics or festival organizers who want to keep their population safe. Eventually, our single, compa single use compact test strip case can be expanded to other applications. We can go into agriculture or emergency medical services or even in a TSA checkpoint line. We started this project as a National Institute of Health um, a grant recipient. We then tested our commercial feasibility here at Sci City, and I'm happy to announce that as of today, we have entered a partnership with Brown University, which is the epicenter of harm reduction research in the United States, to do further analytical testing of our product. As I mentioned, our team is built on, on families and people who have endured this crisis from a personal standpoint. So if you know anyone who would like to join our cause, please connect us. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Lacey, founder of Fidgetals. We're affiliated with Sci City from the 2022 Summer Fellowship Program. This week, Fidgetals is presenting at the 3686 Entrepreneurship Conference in Nashville, Tennessee, as part of their FinTech Accelerator Program. And we're so grateful to Sci City for their support in getting us here. And now, I'd like to introduce and welcome to the stage the Crew Dog Team. Hello. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. We're the founders of Crew Dog. My name's Kobe, and I'm a junior at Yale College. And I'm Constantine, a senior at Yale. Crew Dog is a design and apparel brand that is reimagining collegiate apparel and adding a little life back to it. I'm going to first start with talking about the problem, which is the college merchandise space in general. Think back. For students, I want you to think, when was the last time your group got a new piece of merchandise that you were really excited to wear? And then alumni and people beyond that, think when was the last time you've seen a new design in, for your college that, that you could wear beyond just the logo itself? We felt this as students and from our interviews thought this was a problem as well. Thought the space is generic, it's a little bit boring, designs lack personality, and for students and groups who want to make a custom design, it's a difficult customization process and students aren't really proud to wear what they have anymore. I think we're passing out a few examples of some of the crew next, which hopefully we'll get to all of you. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so the idea came about in April of 2023. But being on the crew team, I wanted to wear something that connected me closer to the organization beyond the classic thing that you get freshman year. So I sketched something up with one of my friends, which is the bare bones one you see on the far left. And adding some color and detail, we came to this as the final design. And I presented it to the rest of the team, and instead of half the team ordering it, everyone bought two people ordered it, and the two people ordered it after in the end. Um, yeah. So how it works. So we were orig our original design was for the Yale crew team, and after they started wearing it around, it spread like a wildfire throughout Yale's campus. We've worked with over 50 different groups on Yale's campus, and through word of mouth, spread to other schools all across this, the United States. And we realized as that kind of happened, we had really found a gap in the marketplace. Um, and that was our first revenue channel, which is the internal campus-focused one. So this, is, this channel is kind of a franchise model where students at different schools who are interested in joining the Crew Dog team um, will come on and kind of represent Crew Dog at their campus and work to work with other organizations and work directly with our team to create the designs, get the orders. Um, Done. This is clubs, sports teams, school organizations, Greek life, etc. We also realized we had created a really cool design that people really loved, which is why we've also started expanding beyond into what we call our external side, which is the broader collegiate focus. So this is building an actual clothing brand through in the collegiate marketplace, which is different at every, uh, of course, at every single school. So now I'm going to run you through how the internal and the custom side works. So if you give us an idea, it can be something as simple has two words, or some people send us like a whole blog post with like details of how they want the ear shaped. And then we get back to you with four to five sketches, and then from there we work with you to iterate it to make it perfect. All of our stuff is manufactured in the US, and it will arrive within two weeks. And we welcome all student organizations, whether it's alumni groups, student groups, fraternities and sororities, clubs, and everything in between. So 
how are we doing? We've had a really great summer working at Sci City in the fellowship program, and we've had a lot of rapid adoption and just broad success um, across the marketplace so far. We've worked with five, over 500 student organizations across a bunch of different schools. We've generated over 400,000 in revenue, 250K year to date. We're licensed with Affinity for sororities and fraternities. We're licensed with Yale and in the licensing process for schools across the country right now. We have our first in-store launch at Campus Customs in a few weeks, so you guys can go check it out there if you want to see more items. We have four full-time employees on the team, eight part-time employees, 35 campus partners across the country, and we're continuing, um, we're continuing to grow. All right, how can you guys help us? So, <laughs> please order our merchandise. We'll have a website link after, and of course, check out Campus Customs. Also, for specifically freshmen joining student groups, recommend the, the merch organizer to use CrewDog. We can definitely sort you out. And then anyone who has friends at other schools, recommend your friends to, to apply to the Campus Partnership Program. It's a great way for them to learn entrepreneurship and grow with the CrewDog team and franchise it out. And finally, a little bit of a weird request, introduce us to some influencers so they can do some PR packaging and unboxing. So if you want to follow along our journey as we hopefully explode and turn the college merchandise business upside down, you can follow our Instagram there. Um, you can go to our website. These, this embroidery, these crew necks you've seen that hopefully everyone got to pass around, which we do want back, by the way, so don't steal them. Um, they'll be launching on our website in the next uh, one to two weeks. Um, and we'll be talking all about it on our Instagram, too. So feel free to follow, um, follow along on our journey. Um, thanks so much. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, so this next team is a little bit unique because they didn't go through this summer fellowship. They went through the one in 2019. This in 2019, this building was in, in, in existence and we really didn't even know what a pandemic was. So there's a lot of different growth and I think this is one of the cool moments because we don't always get teams back. They go to tend to do really big things outside and all over the world. We have some teams in Hawaii and in India and in they're building you know, like incredible, incredible ventures and businesses that do really big things. And today we actually get to see one of these teams that's doing one of those big things and solving real world problems. So this next team is Alori Loladay from Noir Labs. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? Can you hear me okay? All right. My name is Olori Lodi, as you said, and I'll be telling you today about Portal X. But first, I want to ask you a question. Has anyone here ever felt like you're not fully living in your genius and your purpose? Like there's more you could be using with your, doing with your gifts? Raise your hand. You ever had that feeling? It's a 99% normally is the statistic. Um, so what if we dream of something different together? Let's imagine a world in which we don't just dream of fulfilling our highest potential, but, that, but in which it's actually the norm, the rule for us to fulfill our, our highest potential. Let me back up. <laughs> um, let's imagine a world in which we don't just dream of achieving our highest potential, but we each have a clear, personalized roadmap for getting there. This is actually what you're supposed to use. Yep. A world in which living a profitable, fulfilling life through our innate gifts and genius is not the exception, but the rule. Would you want to live in that kind of world? I know I would, and that's why we're building Portal X. We all face a common challenge. Bridging the gap between where we are and where we want to be. Traditional methods of personal development can often be fragmented, boring, and lacking in the personalization needed to get us to the end goal and keep us there, growing from there. Portal X is the answer. This transformative platform will personalize your journey to your North Star, accelerating your path to your highest vision of success. As someone who's experienced real poverty, I know too well what it costs to not have tools like Portal X. I founded Nora Labs while at Yale to operationalize for others the liberation that I was seeking. The revelation of Portal X emerged months later at the height of the pandemic, showing me my path to my North Star. Here's how it works. Portal X leverages cutting edge technology and deep human insights, integrating analytics, gamification, and community to keep you thriving. Imagine logging into this glorious app that reminds you daily of who you're becoming, connects you with your curated community, and serves up glorious content and resources that empower you to reach each goal. Through our four quadrant system, you'll master yourself activate your superpowers, profit from your genius, and thrive with your tribe. You'll receive rewards for milestones achieved and connect online and offline with friends so aligned with your passions 
They make goal attainment feel effortless. That's for you as an individual. Now imagine experiencing this with a team or a community. As we develop the app, the algorithmic framework on which Portal X is based is what we use to support our consulting clients. Our corporate solutions align teams with company missions, fostering both individual and organizational growth. Imagine working in a place where every employee is not only engaged, but fully aligned with their purpose, maximizing creativity, productivity, and innovation. For example, we've worked with Amazon and Yale to deliver custom Black History Month solutions for their teams and communities. This involved analyzing the interests and passions of their communities and designing team building experiences that address their direct needs for deepened cohesion and broadened community engagement. For our voter mobilization client impact, we unlocked opportunities in, in, in the entertainment industry by showcasing their team's brilliance through our strategic storytelling. We're now building a customized technology platform for the Brooklyn Arts Council. The Brooklyn Innovation Portal, which will connect artists with increased economic opportunities, aims to grow artist revenue year over year, potentially adding 400 million to Brooklyn's creative economy over the next five years. To increase our visibility over the next several months, we'll be publishing frequently and publicizing our Mellon, Mellon Foundation funded project, New World Haven. This interactive public narrative will showcase our vision and offerings through digital screens placed strategically across New Haven, positioning Portal X as a game-changing platform for delivering personal development solutions across education, arts, entertainment, and government. If we capture even 0 0.005 of the $1.7 trillion personal and professional development market across our sectors, we'll generate $82 million in the next three years or more, or less. In this competitive landscape, Portal X stands out with our unique blend of technical consulting, creative intelligence, and community engagement. Our personalized approach and deep understanding of our sectors allows us to deliver tailored, fun, creative solutions that larger firms can't match. Don't you wanna be a part of this? <laughs> Through our B2B services and platforms like this, we're maximizing our revenue to accelerate our growth. Our immediate goals are to grow our team, develop a mobile prototype for Portal X, and maximize our visibility with deepened engagement. With the next 250K that we raise, we'll be able to implement the full phase one vision, which includes bespoke curation of, pre of premium content, advanced gamification, and on-platform hybrid events. So let's create the world we want. Become a partner, sponsor, or client so that we can together deliver a world in which everyone can easily fulfill their highest potential. A win for Portal X is a win for all of us. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Isabel Scollinger. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Programming here at SciCity. I run SciCity's Launchpad and Joiners programs. So I'm super excited to introduce this next team. They've been solid community members at SciCity, having participated in our Accelerator program, and then most recently in our Summer Fellowship program as well. And then over the summer, they also won the NYU Yale Pitch Off competition, bringing the trophy back to its rightful place here at home at Yale. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, last but not least, and here to bring us home at Demo Day, let's welcome Parts Match. Can everybody hear me? Yep. I feel like the pitch off win puts a little pressure on us right now. Yeah. <laughs> feeling, the, feeling the nerves a little bit. Um, hi everyone, I'm Griffin Wilson. And I am Skylar Wilson. And we are two of the co-founders of Parts Match and we are freeing up the $172 billion of capital in global auto parts inventories. And to help you understand the depth of this problem, I wanna take everybody through the life cycle of a part. And so the parts manager, they order the part from the manufacturer, gets delivered, they receive it into inventory, and then there are three avenues that it can go down. It can be sold to a wholesale customer, which are collision centers, body shops, and repair shops, or it can be sold to a customer in the store for a repair or service. And if that part isn't sold, uh, what dealerships do is they write them off, and some dealerships actually destroy them and throw them out. Or most often, they write them off, and they put them back in the box, and they tuck them away in the corner, let the box collect dust, and it's never really to be seen again. And we want to prevent this from happening, uh, because one, it's wasteful. Uh, it's not very green to be destroying auto parts like that. And two, these parts have genuine value. They've just been misallocated by the supply chain. We know that there's an unmet need in this market because we've been there before. My family's been in the auto business for 50 plus years. And my brother and I spent pretty much every summer working at my dad's dealership. 
And we actually tried to solve this problem using traditional methods like eBay and Shopify and realized that neither one of them would suffice. And so we decided to create a solution that does. And so our solution is called Parts Match. It's the first automotive B2B marketplace that's powered by AI. And so what we've created is a single network of dealers, collision centers, body shops, and repair shops, as well as engaging with surplus buyers to efficiently reallocate these surplus parts across the supply chain and create instant liquidity for our dealer partners. We combine this with our AI-powered co-pilot, which streamlines a lot of the painstaking and time-consuming operations that are required with managing a marketplace. I've experienced this myself. It took me an entire summer to list about 100 parts on Shopify and eBay. And so what it allows us to do is directly source parts with one click from a repair order. You can think of a repair order as like a grocery list for parts. And it lets you have complete control over the upload process using natural language. So you can upload a subset of your inventory, adjust prices, quantities, and automate the description writing process, all using natural language. And it seamlessly integrates into the ERP system, so there's no discrepancy in their data. And when we tested this, we were able to upload over 700 parts onto our marketplace with custom 100 word descriptions, which with the average person typing 40 words a minute would take almost 40 hours. We were able to do it in 25 minutes. So unlike our competitors, Parts Match is a single unified platform that connects buyers and sellers of surplus parts rather than what was the flavor of the month when a lot of these companies uh, launched was like a bunch of expensive microservices that you have to pay for over and over and over again. And one of the things that we're doing that's different is we're launching in a strategic location. So we're launching in the city that my brother and I grew up in and that my family built the, our automotive business. Um, so we have some deep family connections with dealers and wholesalers, and that's gonna allow us to get really good feedback on our MVP um, to hopefully help us get to product market fit quicker. It's also helping us have some built-in network effects and minimizing some of our costs. So one of the th highest barriers for us was, was shipping, and we're gonna be able to do a lot of the shipping and logistics ourselves, uh, which is great. We are actually taking our cars, showing up at these dealerships, putting the parts in our trunk, and then driving them to where they need to go. Yeah. Hopefully only in the short term. <laughs> yes. Um, so even though we're, we're launching just in, in Edmonton with uh, a couple auto groups, it's gonna be about 30 dealers and 50 wholesalers, so like Fix Auto. Um, there's a couple Fix Autos and, and some other wholesalers. Uh, we've got over 300 dealers and collision centers that have signed up to be on our wait list. Um, and just over the summer, we helped convert over $400,000 worth of surplus parts inventory into cash for three early customers, which was pretty great. Um, it was a lot of manual labor. Um, I had to personally move like $200,000 worth of auto parts out of like a shed. And we, we had seven uh, pallet boxes in our garage. Yeah. Um, that we. My uh, parents were super happy about that. <laughs> really great. Um, so um, our co-founding team, uh, my brother and I, obviously, and, and our, our other co-founder, Marissa, she couldn't be here today because she's down in UNC playing soccer. Um, uh, we're combined some industry experience with some technical expertise, um, and we all went and graduated from Yale College uh, this last year. Um, the little graphic there is actually an ad from the Edmonton Journal, um, and the guy in the top left corner is my grandpa, um, who started the, the kind of car business in my family. Um, and then we also have an advisory board. So uh, the bald guy on the left is my dad. Um, he's genetic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's he's uh, bought and sold over 50 car dealerships and been in the industry for over 35 years. Um, and then Doug Shaw is a, is a family friend. Um, and he was the head of fixed ops and parts management for one of, for Go Auto, which is one of the biggest privately owned auto groups in, in Canada. And, and they're helping us with just they're basically advisors, giving us advice and, and, and helping us kind of navigate the automotive industry a little bit better. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to chat, we'll be over there somewhere as our, our sign. Um, and if you scan the link, it'll take you to our LinkedIn and there's a button for our website on there as well. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>
right. Can we give one big round of applause for all these teams? So it's always a little bittersweet of a moment, at, like closing all the pitches for Demo Day because we get to say goodbye, essentially. Not goodbye. I won't say goodbye. But you all kind of fly the nest. A lot of you fly the nest, which is amazing. You get to all do big things. But then the sweet part is this is kind of kicking off the next generation that who's sitting in the room and who might be coming through over the next year. So let's talk a little bit about what the, the next year actually looks like at Size City for entrepreneurship and innovation. So, oops. if you're interested in being part of you, we've kind of hinted at the entire event, Launchpad, Accelerator, Summer Fellowship, Founders in Residence. If you're interested in any of it, applications for this fall are due on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Highly recommend at least checking it out. Check out their criteria, check out what it takes. These are incredible programs to really build a venture. Or if you're looking to maybe build or join a venture, one of these ventures is actually in the same application, the joiner's interest form, which then you can actually join one of these early stage ventures and we'll help match you to those ventures. So again, it's Tuesday, 9 a.m. Now, maybe you're not ready for one of those programs. You're like, oh, my calendar conflicts. And maybe it's a really tough semester. Or if you're just like, hey, I just want to be around Size City a little bit. Great. If you go to our calendar, there'll be a QR code in just a little bit. You can actually see all the events that are happening at Size City. And there's actually another big one coming on Monday evening with the founder of Olo. And you can hear what that founder journey is like in a fireside chat style. The other big event, which is like this event, but like, 10 times even bigger is Startup Yale. And some of these teams actually, I think, won Startup Yale prizes, or at least pitched at Startup Yale. And Startup Yale is our biggest pitch competition here for students at Yale. And we do this this upcoming year, April 3rd and 4th, at Hotel Marcel, which is that big, weird looking building in, in the IKEA parking lot. We will be there again, April 3rd in the evening, and then April 4th all day. We'll be handing out over $150,000 of checks. We'll have uh, plenty of mentors and community members to meet from the students. And also last year, I believe we had over 75 teams participating in some fashion. So highly recommend Startup BL. If you're a team looking to maybe apply for these checks, don't sweat it yet. We'll talk about it in November. To get that information, actually, let me pause there. If one of the things, though, about Startup BL is actually the workshops and being an active member of it. And usually for these workshops, maybe for some of our programming, Usually it's like our team trying to figure out, okay, what do teams need? We kind of do like a guessing game a little bit. And the rest of our team, I was sitting here stressing about it, and the rest of our team was, who's, was much smarter about this, was like, what if we just ask people? So that's what we're doing this year. So if you're interested in maybe proposing a workshop or a lecture or like any type of panel, you can actually submit a proposal um, for Startup Field to be presenting at Startup Field and help build this ecosystem here in the Yale and New Haven community. The deadline for that is Monday, September 16th, so we still have a little bit of time if you're interested in, in submitting a proposal. It's pretty quick. Um, it just kind of gives an easy gist of what you're thinking about. All right, there's a lot that happens at Size City, but the best resource to find out what's actually happening, kind of staying up to date with and the, all the moving pieces and everything is the weekly newsletter. So highly recommend joining it, and you can join it just by going to this QR code on the right, and you can see the Startup Yale RFP on the QR code, the Sci City event calendar, and then the application for our venture development programs is all there. And even if you don't get the QR codes, all of this is on our website at city.yale.edu. Now, the event's not over just yet. We still have another little over an hour to go meet other teams. And there's actually 20 plus teams hanging out across the building, postering upstairs and downstairs so highly recommend going to go check them out. And as Claire mentioned earlier, sign up for their you know, social media, sign up for maybe their email list. If they don't have an email list, please tell them to get an email list because that's really helpful, right? Go meet with the teams, see what they're up to, um, and just kind of check out what's happening in the Yale Innovation ecosystem. With that, thank you for being here. Super appreciate it. Get drinks, get snacks, meet teams. Um, and thank you for being here.